Ah, it's quite a substantial tail. It's been such a long time since I did something like this. This is literally how your boy started back in 2010. He building RC airplanes out of fragile foam and kept crashing. If you scroll, if you go all the way down to my first videos, you'll see that RC Life on AKA me started fight. You'll find I started YouTube making these crashable RC airplanes. They are very simple to build, but more importantly, they are fun to crash. You print out the plants, you cut them out, and you tape them together, and then place them on a piece of foam, and cut out all the parts, glue them together with some, uh, with some uh, reinforced tape. You're pretty much done. So what does this compliant mechanism have to do with this RC airplane? Derek from the YouTube channel Veritasium met up with Larry Howell, a professor in mechanical engineering and an expert in the field of compliance mechanisms. They did a superb job explaining and showing the benefits of the mechanical properties in compliance mechanisms, one of which being a thrust vectoring system for boosters on rockets and such. So with this one you would attach a thruster here and by pivoting you could angle the motor up and down left and right, which would eliminate on something like this wing would eliminate the need for control surfaces so you could control the airplane up and down by simply tilting the motor left and right and up and down. And that's, that's what we're trying today. What follows is a brief construction montage. No, that's how you know Simon built it. Actually, I didn't just print one, I printed many of them. I did have to print quite many in different sizes and materials before I found the magic balance of flexibility and having a rigid frame enough for it to withstand the power of the motor. The nylon was simply too flexible. Yep, that's PLA. Uh, this one was also PLA. This one is hips. It also broke. This one I can't remember what material it was, but it worked pretty well. But it was really heavy. I settled for something called PC filament, which again was very a very good balance between flexibility, but still rigid enough for it to hopefully hold the power of the motor. And the weight is just 40 grams. All right, let's see it snap just like all the 3D prints always does. Ah, it's quite a substantial tilt. Ah, uh, did it work though? Not really. I completely eliminated any sense of hairstyle. No, God, please, no! Yeah, that got better. So the problem is, 3D printing is very, there's a fine balance between rigidity and flexibility apparently, so I'm, I'm, I'm simply having these kind of parts snap constantly, so I, I, I've only been able to have the tilt mechanism because that's the strongest one. So I'm gonna have to title this video something completely different. Once we put, the once we put a propeller on this, we're most likely gonna see oscillation because it's not completely rigid. So I'm looking forward to it. No, no, I could never build something like this. It's too complicated. 
That's why so many people start with these planes. They are really as basic as it gets. So let me go through it real quick here. So this little guy here is constantly talking to this transmitter. And so when I tell the plane to go up, which is, which is down in this case. God damn, that's already confusing. The receiver tells the servos to move in a direction depending on my input. The receiver needs power to work with the servos, but it can't get it straight from the battery because that's 12 volts. But that's where the black magic of BECs comes in handy. So it takes the 12 volt from the battery and uh, converts it to a 5 volt. And then apparently you need a motor in order to fly a plane. And so that gets controlled by this EC, basically just a regulator of the RPM of the motor. So thumbs up if I made you even more confused. Now to the fun part. The control surfaces right now is just moving. We don't have the servo for the 3d printed mechanism activated so i put that on a switch on a separate switch right here when i flip that you can see all three control surfaces and included the the 3d printed mechanism is now working I was heading out with the skateboard, but the wind started to pick up. So I went back to my hometown for a more shielded place. There was trees all around. At least we're not lacking fields. I have no clue where center of gravity is. Oh, that looked really good. Oh, that looks fine. That looks fine. There is a saying that's pretty funny, so a nose heavy plane flies poorly, but a tail heavy plane flies once. Alright, the vector thing not activated. I'm just trying to see if the plane will fly. I give it a 80% chance of flying and 35% chance... Wait, what? Failure is always an option. Good thing our motto is, failure is always an option. Well, you know, <laughs> any, any result's a result, that's for sure. The plane is fine, thanks for asking. They usually are pretty tough when it comes to crashes like those, especially in tall grass. Uh, but I do have a theory to what happened here and uh, why I think this concept is pretty much doomed. And I would say it's not due to center of gravity because the testing we did, the small amount of testing we did proved to be quite quite well balanced and center of gravity is not that extreme that it causes the plane to it doesn't cause the plane to absolutely dive into the ground even though it was a pretty sweet dive i do think it was caused by the thrust of the motor and i made sure to have the motor very close to the center meaning it wasn't up here and it wasn't down here to have the leverage arm to push it down it was really quite center so that made me believe that the flexibility of the 3D printing PLA, which I did use PLA for this one. I skipped over the PC, it was too flexible. And so PLA is one of the more br brittle and rigid filaments that you can print with. And what I think happened was when I powered up the motor, the servo here and the flexibility or the flexibility within the material couldn't handle the thrust. And so it caused the motor to tilt down just like this, which makes the plane go I could be wrong, but I don't think a larger servo on this axis would have helped all that much. I, I really do think back to the material being the weak point here. And the reason I think it's doomed is because there's no other, there's really no other material that is that much more rigid than PLA. And so you would have to scale this up in order to get more, more robust. And the more you scale up, the heavier it becomes and you would also need a bigger servo, which also increases weight. I straight up hot glued the motor in place, just for a proof of concept, I guess. Whoa. 
Did I get that on video? So I could see the plane being tail heavy because when I cut the throttle, it would kind of glide like this. And then it would pitch up and then it would go down and then it would pitch up again. And so that's the indication that it, the plane is tail heavy. I don't know what happened, okay? I, I, I don't know what happened. All my other projects, every single one, have always worked out flawlessly. This one... Let's just have some projects then. It just can't be a full-on Bitcoin success every single time. 